Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Please lay your hands on your head. Father, speak to me. My heart is open to hear you. My destiny is open to rise. Clarity of understanding. Please play the strings for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Are you praying? Ask the Lord to visit you today. Someone is praying. This is the least level I will be at. I will be at. After this service, I'm rising to a higher pedestal spiritually. For in Jesus' name we pray. Manifesting spiritual realities. Manifesting spiritual realities. You will be marvelously blessed tonight. I want to show you a very powerful secret in the spirit. Manifesting spiritual realities realities the bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a spirit realm and there is a physical realm i'm teaching now please lend me your attention the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are various dimensions that man has the privilege of interacting with and chiefest among them is the realm of the spirit or what we know from our earth standpoint to be the invisible realm and then the physical realm or the material realm that we call the visible realm hallelujah this is very important romans chapter 1 and verse 20 please man has the privilege and the liberty of interacting with this realm we have the advantage of the duality of realms romans 1 and verse 20 says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things which are made even his eternal power and godhead so that we are without excuse so he's saying that the things that are manifest are a testimony to the fact that there is a realm that birthed them that everything physical everything material is a testament that there is another kind of reality beyond the material realm colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 very profound statement that paul made to the church in Colossae. it says for by him were all things created let's read together that are in heaven you see that now and that are in earth uh-huh visible and invisible one more time visible and invisible whether they be thrones that means there are visible thrones but there are invisible thrones there are visible dominions there are visible principalities there are visible powers but there are also invisible dimensions that everything in the physical has its parallel in the realm of the spirit visible and invisible are we learning now this is very important last scripture matthew chapter 3 16 to 17 this is jesus now jesus is in the physical realm haven't become flesh the bible says when jesus was baptized they had an experience they had never had the people there not just jesus the bible says straightway he came out of a physical water and the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of god not just descending from the sky descending from that invisible realm that opened through the atmosphere the bible says they saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lightning upon him verse 17 and a voice the voice did not speak from a radio station the voice was not one of the people there an invisible voice but then it 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 echoed through a visible realm and the people heard it this is my beloved son meaning that the voice spoke a language that their minds could understand in whom i am well pleased so it is clear that there is a spirit realm 
and there is an invisible, a, a physical realm. Listen, as simple as this sounds, you will never be able to manifest realities and that includes your destiny. If all you see and all you know is this three-dimensional realm, you are already disadvantaged for life. The consciousness, the awareness that there is a dimension, are we together? Above and beyond this physical realm already puts you at a vantage position. It is on this one reality that whether you serve Satan or serve God, if you are to excel in your spirituality, there is a mandate upon you that you must believe the existence of the realm of the spirit and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit. That means its ability to superimpose upon the physical realm. This is powerful. It is the reason why we are not discouraged when we see physical things. Because of the awareness that there is a reality in the spirit that is higher and greater than what we see. Are we together? So you can see someone who has been plagued by sickness and you know that there are resources in the realm of the spirit that can be made available to that individual under a certain condition. My God, this is why you can see someone who is poor, dejected, and you come with that understanding that all that this man has is not all he can have. There are resources beyond the physical realm. The second thought that you need to know tonight is that realities are only made manifest. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport these realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. I'll take it again. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport those realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. That means those realities and those resources, whatever they are, they will do us no good provided they remain in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? We need to learn the spiritual technology that can translate those resources from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest. Someone tonight, you are hearing the real cure for poverty. You are hearing the real cure for all kinds of satanic oppression. You are hearing the real cure for manifesting your destiny. There are realities in the realm of the spirit. There are resources in the realm of the spirit beyond the imagination of the average person, beyond the imagination even of the saints. Our assignment is number one, to agree that they are there. Number two, to learn how to transport those realities. And this is my assignment tonight. Hallelujah. Watch this. How many of you know that once upon a time, and even until now, there are treasures beneath the earth where you are seated now? Only God knows how many treasures. Not even science can comprehensively exhaust the treasures and the mineral resources that are under the earth. Science is still learning. Are we together now? And there are resources under the earth. Now, whether you are aware or not, those resources are there. But whether they will become to your advantage has to do with your discovering their presence and knowing how to mine them from the earth. Are we together now? You can have a farm full of gold or diamond or iron ore or whatever it is and you can run around with that awareness. That awareness will not prosper you. Even though it's an advantage, you can tell everybody I have a plot of land or a hectare of land and I promise you I'm not lying. That land has within it gold, has within it diamond, has within it iron ore. In fact, you can even get a few people to help you test and they can say it's true and yet you can remain dejected you can remain poor and miserable because you must have the resources say resources the intelligence to be able to mine it out it says counsel is like deep waters but a man of understanding will draw it out Somebody is finding his way out finally. 
John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh. This scripture has inspired me for years. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who are the us? Physical people. The word domiciled in the invisible realm through some technology found its way to have a material expression. And the Bible says we beheld. So it was not just a vision. When Jesus as the word became Jesus, the child, the baby, he was seen of men. He was seen of angels. You didn't need to be prophetic to see him. Once you were alive, you could see the baby wrapped up in a manger. They saw him as a teenager. They saw him when he grew to become an adult. Invisible things can become visible. Invisible resources can be transported to become a system of advantage to the believer. And I'm praying for you. Everything God has placed in the realm of the spirit that is needed for your destiny actualization. But through ignorance, it's been waiting there for years. May you sustain the intelligence to make it manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down please. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's read NIV or the message translation. The Bible says, through faith. Can we have any? Okay. It says, by faith we understand. Watch this. That the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Can we have the message? Is that possible? MSG. It says, by faith. We see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we do not see. What we do not see is what created what we see. Did you get that now? What we do not see, the invisible realm, is what created this realm. This thing you call anointing, do you see it? Show me anointing. Are you going to lift a bottle of... Um, um, olive oil and show me is that anointing does a tree produce anointing no the anointing can only be trapped in a material vessel like a mantle or whatever but where is that anointing when the bible says god anointed solomon where did it come from can you show me the remains of what fell on him yet you could not deny the effect it fell on a physical man he grew up and demonstrated intelligence are we together now? The things which appear, the crowds which appear, the resources which appear, the influence which appear, they are only a manifestation of realities that are available. Are we together now? And that if you know how to transport those realities, then you will live an invincible life of dominion even in your world today. When you lay hands on a sick person, you are not rubbing anything on your hands. What flows through you to that sick person? When you stretch your hands towards someone and he receives an impartation, where is the connection? What actually flows? From where? invisible resources but their reality can be proven in this realm here and now when you speak to men and say in the name of Jesus may God open the door can you show me the words where are the words can you hold it so why do you lift your hands to say I receive what are you receiving did you feel anything when you received yet you believe something rested on you and you go out carrying that consciousness and you return back rejoicing knowing sometimes the impact is so dramatic that even your physical stature cannot hold the weight of what rests on you yes it is invisible these are transactions happening listen they are spiritual transactions you cannot see it and yet your body attests to the fact that something is happening How about the fire you feel? How about the warmth, the movement of the anointing in your body while the word is coming? Burning within your spirit like it did to the men at, um, at Emmaus. What is responsible for it? You think it's just sounds? Can a speaker make you that convicted? Can a mic make you that convicted? 
I'm just telling you that there are realities. You are here seated now. All you see is not all that is happening. If I ask you to describe all that is happening, you will say, I am listening to a man preaching. That is almost one over a hundred. There are many things happening. God is removing things. God is returning things. The Spirit of God is walking through angelic ministries, walking on the minds of people, just because you cannot see it. Are we together? As these words are coming, listen, the Lord is spreading these words by His Spirit to people so that what is leaving me is not the same thing resting on you. There are things being added on that rest on others. That is why you will be hearing different things even though it's the same person communicating. The realm of the spirit, the wealth of resources. So when God speaks to you, he speaks with the consciousness of the vast resources that are available to back you. Whether you are aware of it or not, see that now. Now, if I ask you a question, assuming you're a multi-millionaire, and I ask you, are you a millionaire? You say yes. If I say, where is the money? You say it's in the bank. Which bank and where is it? You are as confident, yet the money is not with you. But you are confident that I know that I have one million naira or one million dollars or whatever in the bank. You can beat your chest and say, I know I'm a rich man and have no pressure to prove it at all. You may put your hands in your pocket and bring out nothing, and yet nobody can dare tell you you are poor. So why do believers walk as though they are helpless? Simply because you touched your pocket and there was nothing physical there. Or your physical phone showed you zero, zero naira. And you use that to describe yourself and heaven is saying I, you are wasting potentials here you do not understand the vast resources so god helps you by coming to the your dream life and showing you certain things that are available you wake up and say it's a lie god can, can he is joking with me everything you see manifest in the life of the believer comes from somewhere I want you to pay attention. I'm stimulating your creativity because the keys that I'm about to show you now, it will change your life forever. I tell you. Some of you will leave this place without any car, without anything, and yet you'll be jumping like a madman after this service because you will know that you have learned something. You have closed a door that Satan uses to discourage you and lie to you. Apostle, where are the members? They are first in the realm of the spirit. You are not able to see them there. That's why you will never see them physically. Where is the house? Where is the level in the spirit? Let me tell you the truth. Anything that ever manifests is because it found its parallel in the spirit. If it cannot find it there, it cannot be made manifest, including trouble. All kinds of troubles have their spiritual form. They can be pulled down from the realm of the spirit by the manipulation of spiritual laws, courtesy demons, and be made manifest. So men are manipulated mentally to act in a certain way that allows those laws to work against you. You call it tragedy. You call it all kinds of things. But there is an intelligent explanation to those things. Walk with me now. Hmm. There are two major challenges I wrote here with believers. And I want you to listen, please. As far as manifesting spiritual realities are concerned, there are two major challenges with believers. Number one, ignorance of the provisions. Right, please, I'll be slow enough for you to write. I need you to write this. Ignorance of the provisions and resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first major challenge. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first challenge with believers. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. 
Two quick scriptures. Second Peter 1 and verse 3. The first major challenge with believers as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned is we are largely ignorant that there are even provisions and resources beyond this realm. Real provisions available as a system of advantage to the believer. Here's what the Bible says. According as his divine power hath given unto us. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and the things that pertain unto godliness. All things that pertain unto life and all things that pertain unto godliness have been given unto us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Please shout it after me. Say all spiritual blessings. One more time in concert, say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual so this is what Paul says has been given to us. That he's given to us all spiritual blessings. Another way to put it is all blessings. But they are spiritual in nature. Are we together? The first challenge is the challenge of ignorance of the provisions and the resources that are available to the believer in Christ. What is the second challenge? The second challenge is ignorance on how to convert those provisions to their material expressions. How to convert ignorance on how to convert those spiritual provisions to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. I'll take it again. The second major challenge with believers is ignorance on how to convert the spiritual resources, the spiritual provisions that are available for us in Christ, how to convert them to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. Jesus put it powerful in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Matthew 6 and verse 10. He says, thy kingdom come. That invisible influence of your government, let it come by your will being done in this physical realm as it is in the immaterial realm. That means let realities be made manifest in this realm the same way it is in the realm of the spirit. Ignorance on how to convert these spiritual realities to translate them from just being spiritual resources. Listen, how many of you know that science and technology as we call it today is an attempt to show us that realities can be transported. Isn't it amazing that you can dig down to the earth, ladies and gentlemen, mine minerals that don't make sense, mine oil, a dark smelly paste of, of accumulation of all kinds of decompositions over many years and put them together and now begin to pass them through various processes. Out of those minerals will come your phone. Out of that oil will come the gas that powers your generator, powers your car, and whatever it is. So conversion is a possibility. Profiting does not happen at the point of discovery. Profiting happens at the point of conversion. Are we learning now? If I gave you one jerry can of a dark smelly substance called oil, it may not profit you so much until you go and pass it through a process that now distills everything and you can now get your fuel as we call it, your gas and get other things, byproducts from it. Many believers, number one, do not even know the provisions and the resources that are available and for those who know, it just stops at knowing. Do you know healing is yours? Yes. Do you know abundance is yours? Yes. Do you know increase is yours? Yes. Do you know restoration is yours? Yes. 
Have you experienced it? No. Why? The problem is the knowledge of the technology that converts those realities. Man of God, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated in ministry. Businessman, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated. When you go to the place where they make cars, all you are going to see is an architectural design, a 3D representation of that car, and all the metallic resources that will put that car together. But you step out and give the people a few days, a few months, and you will come back and find a real car that you can enter and drive a real car. It was not a car they found under the earth. They found metals, but they were able to combine it in a way that produced cars now with such beauty and elegance. Imagine what can happen to your life when you know how to convert these spiritual resources. Your life will become a wonder, first to you and any other person who cares to see. And may that be your testimony. By this revelation, let ashes and shame and everything that has mocked God, let it fade out of your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you will rise from this understanding and build mighty ministries for Jesus. Mighty evangelical platforms for Jesus. Mighty businesses with transcontinental value based on the things you are receiving. It's true. It's true. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. So the ability to not only know that there are spiritual resources in a dimension that is greater than science, a dimension greater than the three-dimensional realm, and the ability to interact with that realm with such mastery that you can convert and bring to your domain all the resources that are available and needed for your profiting. The ability to convert these spiritual resources to their material expressions for the profiting of the saints. Now, let me give you the keys. There are a few keys that help men to transport spiritual realities of any kind and any sort according to the will of God and to give it material expression. And I please want you to believe the things you are about to hear because they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how great businesses in the kingdom have been built. This is how great visions in the kingdom have been built. This is how great enviable destinies. If you have ever looked at a destiny and wondered how did they do this? I want to show you how it happened right now. 
and I assure you by God it doesn't matter where you are in life and destiny if you pay attention the things I'm sharing with you have a grace following them it is not only the information you are going to receive some of you whilst you are hearing like I taught you there is the Spirit of God will be quickening you something there is an enlargement that will be happening to your spirit like a rubber ring something will be there will be a stretching in the spirit until greater glory glory in a, a greater measure is revealed through your life in the name of Jesus key number one <laughs> manifesting spiritual realities what is the first key that controls birthing transporting and bringing spiritual resources from the realm of the spirit where they are domiciled to the physical realm where they are needed for the profiting of the saints number one the first key contend all kingdom resources i must say this as a preamble all kingdom resources are first spiritual that's not the first key just a preamble to the first key all kingdom resources write this down please they are first spiritual that means they are realities that reside first in the realm of the spirit your prosperity your influence the anointing of the spirit upon your life everything that god has said is a reality in the spirit all kingdom resources are first spiritual they are realities that reside in the spirit realm now let me give you the keys number one what is the first key when you want to transport realities to be made manifest contend for light contend for light this is the first key light here means knowledge knowledge of the resources that are available for you in Christ you cannot open up your heart to receive resources whose availability and presence you are not even aware of hallelujah if I do a transfer to your account and you do not get an alert an email or any other way of knowing did you know say perhaps it were your house rent that I sent to you one million naira or two million naira or three million naira and you can be seated and praying saying God can you help me I'm in trouble my rent is expired the landlord is coming for me maybe they are serving me a court someone because I'm unable to pay my rent whereas two days ago three days ago a real transfer was made to your bank are we together and literally in a in, in in a matter of seconds less than a minute you can make that transfer from your phone and find peace yet because you do not know you can be lamenting whereas your banker knows that you have an uh, you have some money there this is how it is with many believers they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course imagine the many things that God has kept for you that you do not know strategic relationships but first in the spirit strategic help but first in the spirit men and women raised by God to help you while you serve him but that reality is still in the spirit advancement restoration these are all possibilities and realities but that they are locked up they reside in the spirit everything needed for your excelling as a believer is already provided for this is a fact you have to train your spirit man and your mind to believe all things all things the Bible says all things are yours contend for light contend for knowledge this is why you came to church now you are hearing apostle are you saying that the cure for my rent issue is already in the spirit yes sir are you saying that I can walk free of this sickness that the provision the spiritual resources that can translate to a new body part the spiritual resources that can translate to health they are not coming they are already a reality there every one naira one dollar you will ever have and make in this life the reality of those resources are already in the realm of the spirit believe me <laughs> the 
Do you believe this? Contend for light. Light beyond the realm of ignorance. Convince yourself by the Spirit of God. The entrance of His Word brings light. What you are hearing now is giving you confidence. Is killing away carnality. So Satan will tell you, if it is true, where is the anointing man of God? Prove that you are anointed by laying hands on someone. Nothing happens. Don't worry. The problem is not the presence of that reality or, or, or the, the falsehood of what you believe. No. What you believe is the truth. It's just that you have not mastered how to convert it. How to make it a reality. Hallelujah. Contend for light. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second key? I want to dwell a bit on this second key because it is a miracle that changed my life. My God. It's easy for the average believer who has been in church to understand point one. Light. Every gathering in God's presence with God's people with a good teaching priest is a feast of light. But the reason why light does not profit many believers is because of the second point. Write this down. The second key to manifesting spiritual realities. I wrote here, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. You just write it and I'll explain to you. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Psalm 36 verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. Read the remaining line, please. In thy light. One more time. There are two things the Bible is saying here. Number one is you need his light. But when his light arrives, that is not all you need. There is a kind of light you must see through his light. In your light, I have seen your light. But there is a light I need to see in the midst of your light. He says, in your light shall we see light. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Now watch this. The word conscious means to be aware of and to have the ability to respond to. When they say you are conscious towards something, it means that number one, you are aware of that thing or that environment and that you have the ability to respond. To be conscious means to be awake unto or to be awake towards. So when you are sleeping, they call you unconscious with respect to that realm. Do you know why? Because even though you are alive, your consciousness is not there. You are sleeping. So two people can be discussing within the room. And although you are there, you may not hear what they are saying because you are asleep. When they wake you and give you a few minutes to get yourself together, now you are conscious of the environment. And what is the proof that you are conscious? You can respond intelligently. If I ask you, how are you? Or where did you keep the key? You can answer me. You may not be able to give me that answer while you are asleep and yet you are not dead. Are we together now? So when we talk about being conscious, it means being alive unto a reality. And let me tell you the truth. Until you rise to a realm beyond just light, the realm of consciousness and conviction, you will never, never have those realities manifest. This is the assignment of a mystery in the spirit called meditation. Write it down, please. The assignment of meditation is to transport spiritual realities beyond the book, beyond the message, into your spirit, into your consciousness. The mystery that controls that transportation is called meditation. The second key, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. To be conscious means to be aware of. Now watch this. I wrote something down here. You are conscious of a thing when it dominates your thoughts. 
Did you hear that? You are only conscious of a thing when it has gained dominance over your thoughts. That means your thinking has been influenced by that reality. Now it has come to a realm of consciousness. Look up please. How many of you have gone to any embassy whatsoever? Don't lift your hands. Maybe to go and apply for a visa. American embassy, UK embassy. You know how you think about it all through the night? You've thought about it. If for any reason you wake up, what is on your mind? You are imagining, I'm standing before the consular now. This dress I'm wearing, no, I'll change it. I don't want trouble. I need to get this visa. You see how your whole day, some of you, it affects your mood. You are not able to eat till you return. And it's not like it's a doctor that said you should not eat. You are just thinking. That thing has happened as a result of meditation. You literally see yourself you've never been to the embassy say you don't even know how it looks like yet your mind is so powerful your mind will simulate a consular officer standing there and yourself answering all kinds of questions that is how you are into that project let me tell you the truth those who build anything great are not just those who have wishful thinking they have become immersed into the thing that drives them the Bible calls it the zeal of the Lord. That the zeal of the Lord can consume a man. Are we together? To a point where what dominates your thoughts is the reality of that truth according to scripture. All through while Jesus walked upon the earth, he kept talking about the purpose for which he came. He kept talking about the fact that he was going to die. He will be buried. What kind of a man keeps talking about his death? You will call it negative confession. It was not negative confession. Jesus kept repeating, I'm going to die, oh, and I will come back to life again. To the point that Peter rebuked him and said, stop saying all these things. The reason why many people cannot become and they cannot manifest realities is that they have not taken the truths of scripture and meditated upon it until it moved past the realm of just information and sunk into your spirit something happens to a man when the word of God becomes spirit and life it occupies your consciousness you cannot be separated from that truth again you have so believed it, you have become one with it. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. You have become one with that belief. You can't deny it again. You can't betray it again. The way you know that light has not entered your consciousness is that the moment it does not work, you are in a, you are in a hurry to divorce it because you never truly believed it. Hallelujah. So if, for instance, someone is a giver and you just hear one message against giving, you say, thank God, I've been looking. You never believed in giving. Never. 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 Consciousness. When you get to that point, the day you meditate on your being anointed, one day, as you are opening the scripture, light, it will no longer be thou anointest my head with oil that is stories a day will come something will leap upon you and whether you are sleeping whether you are wearing a pajamas or on jean or on suit the consciousness not just by shouting and saying i'm anointed it's a settled reality let me tell you with all humility i sat down with this book and as i meditated upon it it didn't happen every day, but one day, certain things just entered my spirit. So this is how much power the believer can carry. It says, you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. When I saw it, I don't know if I believed it the first time. I was just sincerely reading the Bible. But one day light entered me. The true spirit of dominion that there is no territory that sustains the power to fight your influence. If you have not carried the consciousness of certain things, you will only be a victim. Your mind will be swinging from left to right. One day I meditated on the scripture that says, whatsoever he doeth, 
prospers. Now, let me tell you, that looks like a simple story. Oh, yes, whatsoever I do, it prospers. Amen. That, no, you have not gotten it. You act on that thing, it will never work for you. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters. One day is by 2 a.m. in the morning. This is you. Shama kaparakata You are meditating on that thing. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. You look at your hands. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. It will make sense to you in a way that will annoy somebody close to you because they don't know what has entered you. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. From that day, you will never fail in anything again because it has entered your consciousness. This is what it means in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered into me. The spirit of any revelation if it has not entered you, you will keep gyrating. This is the problem with the body of Christ. We shout over revelations that have not moved past the realm of knowledge into your consciousness. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I meditated on that scripture and I came to a conclusion that I cannot be a cause to my world. In thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Where I come from notwithstanding is, is a blessing that God gave to Abraham and his seed. And Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he's talking about me. I am a blessing. If I come to your house, I am a blessing. Some things must leave and some things must come. If I shake hands with you, it's not pride. Some things must leave and some things must come. If you listen to me, some things must leave and some things must come. It's a consciousness. It's not about empty boasting. You can be shouting and the realm of the spirit will say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? This is what great men like Bishop Oyedeko meditated upon. And he said, God told him he canceled his ministrations. And he said, get down and make my people rich. Now, that may, a lot of people will find it offensive. That's why he didn't say it to everybody. He said it to the one who can believe him. Mm. Hallelujah. This is what I believe. Oh. This reading things randomly, when the spirit of revelation comes to you, eh, you can stay on one scripture for one week. It's not a competition to finish the Bible. It's that one scripture that has a treasure that defines the next 10 years of your life. You stay there till the spirit of that word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall. He never said I shall not want money. If all you are thinking about is money, it's a sign that you are thinking carnally. I shall not want. This is the realm of sufficiency. I shall not want men. I shall not want things. I shall not want influence. No. This revelation damages insufficiency forever. Never will you be without help. If God sends you to America, you shall not want. If he sends you to Europe, you shall not want. If he brings you to Abuja, you shall not want. You are crying simply because you do not know. You are wanting. Even though you are reading the scripture, it is not yet in your consciousness. Take it higher for me. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We are changed. We are changed. We will stay until we are changed. Listen, can I tell you the truth? 
there is nothing you can do with a man that has got light beyond the book if it has entered that realm of consciousness only death can stop it from happening it's a, it's a realm where it is settled no matter what you say or do not say as far as that result happening is a realm listen this is a reality that both science and religion tell you that controls manifestation the realm of consciousness listen let me tell you the truth still take it high for me there are things I believe I can never be a victim of till Jesus comes and this is not empty talk I have stayed with scripture until that thing one of it is that I can never lack the help of men no no it's not because I'm anointed is the revelation that brought that anointing this thing you see this grace called favor that we are shouting you read it you will never get it it that's not how it works we will stay until we are found 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 we will stay When God called me into ministry, I took time to pray. One of the things I covenanted with God with was that I did not want to manipulate God's people because of this money thing. I saw sincere, well-meaning people who love the Lord. But once you are pushed by the pressure of ministry, you would do things you never planned doing. But I know that I have to eat. And the implication of ministry is that you will feed many people. You will be like Father Abraham, having many children, your own and the ones that have forced themselves to be your own. And I said, God, I don't want to tell people lies. I had great men like Bishop Oyedeko, great men like my dear revered mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. They talked about the potency of walking in the blessings of God while others were there arguing in pride with no result I said God you can't be lying please show me I confess my ignorance I have read this thing but it's not working there are human beings in the world but nobody's looking my direction I don't need to go to a herbalist there is a way Kai. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there when I caught that revelation of I shall not want I said this is it and God is able to make all grace if you think what prospers men is business get ready to suffer till Jesus comes now I'm not I'm not against those things don't get me wrong but first things first the realm of the spirit is what controls the physical realm but when you hold it there bar that's it you've held it you've held it it's true the same thing with the ministry of the spirit the anointing I saw great people that I admired walking in dimensions of the anointing and I said there has to be a way I got all the teachings and the materials I don't want to do a ministry speaking to people and they're shouting amen coming week after week making sacrifices and then they don't testify that is evil and is wicked in fact is fraud I said I don't want that kind of thing Father, show me the secret to real power. Real, genuine power. I have found David, my servant. Ah, so God can find men, but until he finds his servant, he will not anoint you. God can find Joshua Selman, but he's looking for his servant. For as long as you are still Joshua Selman, that oil will not come to your head until you become his servant. The anointing is not for men of God. The anointing is for servants. Genuine people who love Jesus beyond their reputation, who want to see him glorified. You see. You know why sometimes you hear me tell these guys to play these things? This is not 
it's not a movie one day I was meditating on scripture and the Lord took me to the story of Elisha he said bring me a mistral and while the mistral played he said the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy then he says I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart it may not work for everyone but that is how light came to me I valued divine presence when I meditated on the scripture Moses said do not send us from here if your presence I'm showing you how to manifest realities what provided what you are doing is just reading the Bible to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual you will never never produce anything potent he said if your presence will not go with us and then here's what he said he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest I said that's the key to rest the presence of God I remember in 2005 I spent a major part of that year doing a research on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I wanted to know what was it about Jewish worship and God's presence. That's when you saw that I started falling in love with all this kind of Paul Wilbur songs, King of Kings, we hail you most high. All these songs that came laid down by the Spirit because I found out that there was a connection to these kinds of songs and the Spirit of God and the Shekinah of God. Listen, you must move past the realm of just reading scripture and get it to your consciousness. It will take time, but allow the Spirit of God move it. Stay in your one room and read the scripture on how God brings men out. The day it enters your spirit, you will know. The devil will know. Everything around you will know. And like a magnet, it will start drawing from anywhere on earth the men and the circumstances that must make that word become reality in your life. I assure you on this. Listen, hear me. The day the power to prosper through meditation comes on you, right where you are, you know how, and you know how explosions happen. A nuclear bomb. Huh? That's how it would, from your place, it's like an explosion in your spirit. It will gravitate everything that must make that revelation true in your life. And it will bring it to your life. It is true. Sometimes it's difficult to teach these things because people mistaking it for pride. But by the privilege of God's grace, you see, we have proven these things and we'll prove it again and again and again. Your consciousness the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want it doesn't stop there but that is the springboard the Lord not my ability the Lord here's how many of us interpret it my brain is my shepherd I shall not want <laughs> no. the Lord the journey to lasting well starts with the Lord. It does not ignore your mind. It does not ignore your value. But it is the Lord. Because he must be Alpha and Omega. Are we together? Sit down, let me give you the third. For someone, let me give you a little assignment. Just lay your hand gently on your head. I want you to think of one scripture by the Spirit that you know. There are many scattered in the Bible, but one bailout scripture that you need to meditate upon until light enters your spirit. For some of you, is thou anointest my head, thou anointest my ministry. Are you seeing that ministry anointed rising from where it is? Are you seeing yourself rising? As a father of nations you may not be physically called Abraham but ladies and gentlemen 
when what God told Abraham enters you, nothing will keep you down. You just do what I'm asking you to do. And you see a miracle that is happening to your spirit, man. You're a businessman. Take away your mind from your brain and look unto Jesus. Some of you are in ministry. You have struggled and struggled. It's not an issue of struggling. There is a consciousness. For as long as there are 8 billion people on earth, everybody will not tell God no. He can fish help for you from everywhere. There are some of you, the revelation for you should be that God is the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Mm. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. You have to be taught. No, it's not your ability. You are taught. You just take a minute to meditate on this. Some of you, it's that meditation that will cure you from causes forever. Raised up with him out of every tribe, out of every tongue, even the worship of the dead. Yes, people were buried in my village but have been exalted. Exalted beyond every curse. Exalted beyond every charm, any enchantment. For someone, the revelation for you is no weapon formed against you, formed in the secret, formed by the conspiracy of men, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. For another, surely they shall gather. But because they are gathering of not of the Lord, they will scatter as much as they have gathered. They will come in one way and be dispersed in seven ways. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hear me. Psalm 119 from verse 97 to 99. Let's hurry up. Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Meditation involves hearing. Meditation involves speaking. Meditation involves the power of your imagination. All of them have to come into play as you meditate. Oh, how I love thy law, he says. They, or oh, it is my meditation. How long? The psalmist, all the day, my meditation. Verse 98. Thou, through your commandment, has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Last verse. I have more understanding than my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation. The secret to my conviction, my meditation, he's saying, or my persuasion is that I have meditated on that reality. You see, one of the ways you meditate is to repeat thoughts again and again and again. It's a practice till today till today I can play a teaching play a message play scriptures play verses again and again sometimes I make declarations myself and record it prophetic declarations myself and I put it on repeat while I sleep there are times I want to focus on just two verses I meditate on those two verses. I first quote them and then make prophetic declarations by myself. They are in my phone. And I play it on repeat. Whether I'm awake or sleeping. Sometimes I'm doing my study and they are playing. The goal is not awareness. I'm transporting it to a realm. When it lands that realm, I know that I'm ready for the next step. I've shared with you my story. When God moved us to Abuja, I was praying and trusting God for direction. And God told me, like he did Abraham, get the map of Abuja. 
get the map of Nigeria get the map of Africa get the map of the world and he says start praying with those maps so every time I'm praying I will place those maps four of them I still have them till today and lay my hands one day something happened to me I looked at the map of Abuja and it became small very small the city just became it's like it just shrunk and it became small I knew a miracle had happened I knew Koinonia was ready to start because that reality of territorial dominion for the sake of his majesty that's what happened hallelujah but every once in a while not every time I revisit those maps again and now that God is sending us to the nations I carry that map of the world sometimes and I look at it and I look at the continents from the eyes of the Creator not from the eyes of an inhabitant you can't see that far but when you stand with the Creator's lens you will see that there is no nation you cannot conquer men like John Knox saw this and they said God give me Scotland not a community give me that territory listen when you do this you can see great things you can put your businesses and say by God's grace I will have a global business for the kingdom people will laugh at you it's, it's not an attack it's a usual thing with men men are permitted to laugh until your result bail you out provided you have not produced result don't be angry that men laugh and mock mockers are a natural pathway to greatness if you don't find them you're on the wrong path their presence validates that you might be doing something right so you continue but when you emerge you get that thing to your consciousness you will marvel and wonder at what happens to you hallelujah my dear friend pastor Shola when his church got burnt we went for a conference in his church and pastor Poju said something just a, a brief session before I came up to preach and he said something within a few minutes but it was such a profound blessing he told the church then he said take away the memory from your mind of a born church and see a great church that God is building as simple as that statement was I said this is it the Spirit of God quickened that statement while we look not at the things that are seen you have been seeing your disappointment every time you look at your passport you remember the visa you didn't get you look at the situation and you see yourself as a beggar forever you see yourself as a weak man of God in competition with other men of God or getting angry that is the reason why it keeps you like that you need to wipe that vision out of your mind you must have control over your meditation finally brethren Philippians chapter 4 I believe in verse 8 whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise koinonia help me think on these things anything that is outside this list the bible is giving you an advice that meditating on them is a risk to your destiny Number three, manifesting spiritual realities. Can we continue? I want you to listen to point number three very carefully. Mix the truth you know with faith. Mix the truth you know with faith. Hebrews 4 and verse 2. Mix the truth you have found that has entered into your consciousness. Mix it with faith. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith. What does it mean to mix? Combine. Combine your meditation with faith. What is faith? Your obedience. Your actions of obedience. Obedience to the conditions that connect to the promise every speaking of God I have taught you here 
has conditions connected to it. Listen carefully. The profit point of your Christian adventure is when you find the truth, meditate to create conviction, and then you engage, you mix with obedience, faith. Most people do not obey scripture. They want the results, but they are not willing to obey. To obey means you have to embrace the spirit of wisdom. What does the Bible say you should do that connects to the promise you are looking for? For instance, the Bible talks about laziness and begging, how that both of them are related. So when you meditate on the fact that the Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? What is your point of obedience now? Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, huh? that is in righteousness, you do as unto God. So you can go and get the job even though it's just 40,000 or 50,000. You are obeying. You are working in keeping with the law of diligence. That there is a relationship between increase and diligence. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Okay? What then is the action points there? That means I will give. Not out of compulsion or manipulation. But with the revelation that number one I love Jesus. But that the law of increase is connected to giving. And then you do so. And it works for you. That's why I said obedience requires not just zeal, but the spirit of wisdom. You need to know what to do. Master, we have told all night. There are many, many people who are found wanting in the place of obedience. It's why they do not see promises manifest. Let me tell you the truth. As much as I sympathize with the many things happening around our nation, there are people, even if dollar were one naira to one dollar, they will still be poor. Because their problem is not Nigeria, nor whatever government is in power. I'm not a politician. There is an intrinsic determination to remain lazy. Huh? Jesus said, the poor you always have with you. It's your own, it's your own responsibility to exempt yourself. There are people who are very lazy, there are others whose energy is not coordinated with wisdom. So there is blind dissipation of energy that is not constructive. This is what we call productivity. Channeling your energy with intelligence so that you produce specific outcomes. You don't waste energy and resources. Are we together? Yes. This can be true for ministry. As a man of God, you cannot sit down lazing around, being everywhere, talking, gossiping, jumping from pillar to post and you want God to trust you with the destinies of many, you don't sit down to pray, you don't sit down to learn, you don't open up your heart to grow. God is not a scammer, he's not a fraudster. He's in a business of using serious people, not just available people. It's wonderful to be available, but you must also be usable. Are we learning now? So most of us have found one thing. Someone after this meeting, you need to get angry and tell yourself, this week, I must start something. If a job does not come by the spirit of grace, I will read a book, I will watch something profitable online. I will get up and go and look for, there's a land that my brother has. I will start farming this week. Let me farm and fail, no problem. At the point of obedience, that's when the miracle comes. He told the ten lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went. Say, as they went. One more time, say, as they went. The miracle happens at the point of obedience, not before obedience. Maybe there are people here God has spoken to to sow certain seeds according to the revelation and Isaac sowed in that land in the time of famine. And you are there giving flimsy excuses. Time will pass, the famine will finish, and you remain broke. When God put it in my heart to do some of the things we are doing now, I became excited because one, I love Jesus sincerely. Two, I love you with all my heart. Three, I love myself with all my heart. You see that? That in my obedience is my rising. I don't rise because I'm a man of God. 
I rise because I'm a practitioner of the truth of God's word. Koinonia, are we learning? Obedience. 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 Provided you camp around disobedience, I guarantee you under God, there are certain realities you will never see manifest in your life. You can do eye service, but eventually your life will show that God has marked your script and has found you wanting. Are we learning now? Yes. Obedience. For some of you, your, your point of obedience can be to obtain the grace to start being diligent in consistent, fervent prayer. You are a man of God. You are trusting God for increase. Go back and settle down. Some of you, you are leaders that God has called. He's shown you that you are going to be a global leader. With the level of intellectual deficiency you have, it will be a risk for God to trust you at certain heights. Therefore, increase your capacity. Go and borrow vessels. If it means going to get certain certifications to add to your pedigree, your qualification, to give you that edge with respect to what he's called you, go for it. Lazing around and envying people in anger will not solve your problem. Are we together? Getting angry at another man's farm will not make your farm suddenly become green. You will sit down there while weed is growing on your own farm as you are pointing fingers on people who are plowing their farms with diligence. I don't like this family. It, I, I'm sure that they met witches and wizards to rise. The man returns late in the night, finds you sleeping, wakes up early in the morning, you are still sleeping, returns in the afternoon, finds you gossiping, and what a witch. <laughs> Where is your guy? He's traveled. Where did he go to? He went for a seminar somewhere as a director of a company. Yes, sir. And you sit down there playing something in the afternoon, sitting in the sun, arguing about Nigeria, arguing about Africa, and wondering why your, your store is empty. Next time you say, I will never be poor, the meaning of that is that I'm determined to do what will make me never to be poor. If you don't finish that statement, you lied. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Faith. I release the grace for obedience upon you. Shout a believing amen. The grace to walk in keeping with the truths that commit God to perform on your behalf. May that grace be released upon you. If it is the giving grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the praying grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the fasting grace, may it be released upon you. If it's the grace for diligence, may it be released upon you. If it's the grace for value and productivity, may it be released upon you. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, Rest on me, Spirit of wisdom. Oh, oh, oh. Rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me, Spirit of wisdom. Rest on me. Let me give you an advice. It's a loving advice. Stop complaining about what is not working. Bend your head down. Obtain grace from God and start exempting yourself through obedience. Let me speak to every young man here. Complaining about Nigeria and joining in all kinds of profitless debates will not define your reality. No. We don't shy away from what is happening. But let me challenge every responsible person in this ministry from tomorrow, Monday, Make up your mind, I'm not complaining again. If you don't know what to do, wake up and listen to all my teachings on productivity. Start from there. I shall not want, listen to it. Huh? The power of productivity, listen to it. Get working and when people want to distract you 
and eat up your productivity gently tell them sorry that's all right we'll talk about it when i have a bit of free time ah, today is monday and you are busy already tell them i came to church and i received an apostolic a priestly a fatherly counsel that complaining does not increase it only brings people down are we together now you settle down and begin to work out your salvation with fear and trembling lord i came from a family struggling i make up my mind by grace that things will begin to change now some of you may need to go somewhere and say you know what bring me as an apprentice in this company i will receive salary but i will receive wisdom i am tired of laziness and they say really by the third day with favor on your life that you're about to receive you'll be surprised what will happen god will bring somebody there who will say i'm looking for a well-behaved gentleman and the director will say everybody is busy only one guy who does not collect salary follow that white man and that's the end of it god begins to lift you i forbid you from being lazy shout amen listen anything you are doing now that you cannot give your all to stop it immediately i don't care what it is anything you are doing with part-time seriousness leave it immediately look for what is worth giving your all are we together now you will never find me putting my hands in many things because i commit my all in it i rather do only two things in my life and plunge myself if i perish i perish mentality is the mentality of victors are we together you are in a part club there you have never attended the membership meeting you are causing trouble for the people you are a part worker in church you are not serious in your office you are a ghost worker in the house of god you don't come at home you are not a serious husband or a serious wife or a serious child so part part commitment i rebuke that spirit now the bible says they followed him wholly there must be something in your life that is worth the investment of your all anything you have to give only part of you to is not worth it it's not worth it it's not worth it when people bring visions for me to lay my hands on i ask them can you do this for the rest of your life if they say no this is just for a while i tell them okay while you are doing this look for what is worth the commitment of your life and also be building it nothing wrong in doing things part way but if that is all you do you'll be disappointed when I got into ministry, I knew that I, I would serve God till the day I see his face. There's no plan B. That bridge was burnt by myself. Show me a man that believes in what you are doing and you can push your all in it. I show you the person who will frustrate life and Satan forever till you emerge. Are we together? There are footballers who play football as a ministry. They train, they give their best. There are those who are just looking for money. Nobody invites them because their passion betrays them. There are business people who are out to add value before profit. They give their best. Even when the business is not profitable, they continue. Because what drove them was not just profit, it was impact. So eventually God rewards them. But there are others who from day one, they are looking for money. So they compromise even at the detriment of their own integrity. Provided money will come. There are people today who can do anything that you know, provided it will bring money. Anything. No, you cannot live like that. There are people who will do anything to make ministry work. Anything. And when I say anything, let's hurry up. Number four. What is the fourth key? Pay attention to this one. I sense that there will be a stirring in the spirit as I teach on this fourth one. Are you ready? The fourth key to manifesting spiritual realities engage in spiritual warfare engage in spiritual warfare you will never manifest anything from the spirit that carries weight without engaging in spiritual warfare 
What is spiritual warfare? Establishing victory over spirits. Write it down, please. Establishing victory over spirits and conditions that fight the manifestation of the word in your life. Establishing victory over spirits and over conditions that fight the manifestation of the word in your life. In your life means in your ministry, in your home, in your business, in your sphere of influence. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, spiritual warfare. My God, my dear people, believe this. Believe this. There is a warfare dimension to transporting realities from the spirit to your realm. For a great door, let's read together, one to read. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, uh -huh, and there are many adversaries. I've taught you here. For every door that is to be opened, there are adversaries. There are adversaries. There are adversaries. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. First Thessalonians 2 and verse 18. Engage in spiritual warfare. Paul is speaking and he says, Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, I tried and tried and tried, but Satan himself, not a demon spirit, hindered us. Satan still fights the manifestation. Listen, all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits. All. All demonic unclean spirits are stubborn spirits. Meaning, just because the word says they should obey, does not mean they will obey. The same way the executive arm of a government, they pass a decree, but it does not mean defaulters will obey. They are aware that is the reason why law enforcement agents are released. The, the basis for the function of law enforcement agents is what the executive have passed. Is that true? Or legislature, whatever it is. And then when it is passed, they now catch you wanting and the basis of their punishing you is to let you know you have defaulted an executive order somewhere. For instance, stay at home for sanitation. If you default and they catch you, they will tell you you are aware. Are you aware? Yes, sir. If you are fortunate, they pardon you. If you are not, they will find you and you will go to jail. That's how it is. When God says you are a blessing, Satan says, what did he say? No. We will fight it. They first come to you to find out whether you are aware and you believe. Then they find out whether it has become a reality in your consciousness. Then they find out whether you have obtained the grace to obey. If there is no point, they will attack you directly for no reason. The, the reason why Satan attacks primarily is because he's antichrist and he's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's no point stealing, killing, and destruction until there is something to steal, something to kill, and something to destroy. Let me tell you the truth. The kind of warfare that you have to fight to birth prophecy to your life, it will take stamina in the spirit. Hallelujah. It is the reason why you see us pray. It is the reason why you see us engage. Behind the physical manifestations that you see, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. Do you know the warfare that Satan puts up just to get you to come here to hear what you are hearing now. You think the devil will leave you to come to your house just like that? But thank God for men and women who understand the art of the altar. Praying and saying, Lord, everyone who should come and hear this word, they will come by the Spirit. So even when your car does not work, just when you are getting offended, your neighbor says, I'm coming for koinonia today, let's go. There's no excuse. It's not a coincidence. It was engineered by priesthood. Say spiritual warfare. A family that does not pray will become a victim of Satan. A couple that don't pray will be a victim of Satan. A mother that does not pray will have her children turn into armed robbers and all kinds of people. 
a father that does not pray is like a man who opened his gate and said, if you are a thief, just come in. You are welcome to this house. Because if your house is not a house of prayer, I have taught you, it becomes a den of robbers. A believer who does not pray, among many other disadvantages, will become a victim of the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilences, the destructions that waste in noonday. Someone shout minus me. Let the devil hear you. Oh, as the arrows fly from wherever, you know, there, there are all kinds of missile technologies today that the army uses that sometimes when you fire a rocket against a nation, as they detect it, they counter it immediately. It's been programmed. It will explode that thing in the air there and then fire another rocket following the trajectory where that thing came from. Come on now. To backfire back to the place. As I said this thing, it just moved something in my spirit. Back to where it came from. Shalakaposia. Any man that programs anything against your life, in the name that is above all names, he returns back to that devil this night. He returns back to that devil that night. This concept of things backfiring happens so. Ask Haman. Haman dug a pit. He had sized Mordecai. This is how this guy will be hung there. I wonder how he felt when it was his time to hang. The Bible says, now the Lord of peace himself. Is that in your Bible? That he will give you peace always and by all means. That means anybody that makes himself the trouble of your destiny. May the God of vengeance arise over them in this season. Anybody that has vowed that provided he's alive, your family will not laugh. Your family will not smile. I say it again. By the God who sent me, let the sword of vengeance descend upon them this week. Descend upon them this week. Hallelujah. I was once told the story of a young lady, true story. I don't know, I think it happened I hope I get the whole story. It happened because of jealousy and envy, I think. Maybe some woman, I was told, stamped her feet and beat her chest in the front of the lady and said, provided she's alive, that girl will not go forward. It will only work if you have not met power. Did you hear what I said? I believe in power, oh. I really believe in power. We are wasting the time of God's people without power. That coalition from anywhere, while they make those enchantments while you are sleeping, this family should not rise. This family should not rise from nowhere, like thunder from heaven. Tabarus Kadiata, a power greater than all powers descends from the realm of the spirit with a manifestation in the physical realm and will scatter every plotting of darkness. Yeah. Hallelujah. It doesn't tire me to share our story when Koinonia started. I don't know who innocently decided to kill himself like that, that they brought charm and hung it outside. When they called my attention to it, I, in my mind, I said, who is this one now? Huh? You choose your battles with wisdom. Who wants to, you want to kill yourself for nothing? Abba. Even in, there's something called boxing. There's heavy weight. There's a, what's the other one? Middle weight. There's light weight. It's unfair to join some people together. The person who is a lightweight champion, he's only a champion based on those he's fighting. There are people when he joins the way they will punch him once. He will not only fall, he will die. May you be a heavyweight in the spirit. I said, may you be a heavyweight in the spirit.
believers, please hear me. Do not let anything and any teaching, I say this with every sense of love, but with every sense of passion, do not let anybody make you downplay the relevance of spiritual warfare. If you believe that thing, you have destroyed your destiny. Now with all you, I love the body of Christ, but I owe you to teach you. Huh? Yes. There is a warfare dimension to living. Some of you, this is where you are now in your destiny actualization. The attacks in your life don't have a reason. And if you keep quiet, say, who did I offend? Have you said that thing before? Hello? Let me answer that question. You don't have to offend anybody. Just be born. Who did Moses offend? Who did Jesus offend? Provided they were born. The moment there is a prophetic word over you, whether you invite the devil or not, he will say, I, we have heard that there is a man of God rising from this family. Where is he? We've heard that there is somebody who is going to carry the grace to take this family out of shame. Satan does not look for everybody. Everybody will be his victim. But pending on the urgency, there are people he knows. If I attack this man, it's equivalent to attacking everybody in that family. So don't say, who did I offend? He will come knocking at your door. Hello, sir. I hear you are the firstborn in this family. I've come to destroy all the ladies to destroy the man. Don't, don't shut the door in fear. Open the door and tell him, all right, you will know that there are weaknesses on earth. You carry the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Who art thou mountain before Zerubbabel, before this family? Listen, how do you know that you are under attack when the occurrences in your life do not match up? Are we together? With the commitments of value and obedience you are bringing. Mysterious things happening in your life. In two months, everything in your life disappeared. You lost your job. Your wife lost her job. Your child who does well in school, very brilliant child, He's returned with a result that is an evil report. And you are watching. No, sir. Wake that child up and say, this night, we are going to do vigil in this house. You carry your lantern, carry your Bible, share one scripture. If you don't know any scripture, look for our teachings, get one scripture from there. Lead your family to prayer. Tell them, pray after me. Father, they repeat, in the name of Jesus, as a family, we declare no enchantment and no divination. Carry your CAC document from your business. Place it on the parlor there. Carry your child's uh, whatever it is. Place it as a point of contact. In the name of Jesus, my child will not fail. He will not waste my money. Are we together now? Three days in a row, you had a dream and you saw your wife dying. Call her. I'm not just your husband. I'm the priest of this house. Let me lay my hands on you. Listen, don't think I'm just acting. Do it. This is the responsibility of leadership. While the people are sleeping in your house, wake up and start walking to your parlor, to your bedroom. Your little son wakes up and you say, don't worry boy, go and sleep. But if you want to learn, follow me. Because one day you will learn too. Lay hands on everything in your house. You had a dream that your car crashed. In the name of Jesus, what God gives is for good. Every good and every perfect gift. God will not give me what to kill me. In the name that is above all. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are about to have a meeting with people and you know they are not born again. What makes you believe they will not tie charms or come with all kinds of things? You are a Christian, but they are not Christians. And someone comes to sit down, spend the whole night enchanting your name. Send forces to your office before their arrival. By the time those forces are coming, they will see light and angels. They said the same way you were praying, he was praying too. Hallelujah. Ah, come to Koinonia. 
destroy apostle and destroy koinonia is a joke. Before you rise, come on now. Before you rise, here comes that fire. The same fire we were furnished out of. The same fire that protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego huh, is the same fire that can kill and destroy too. This world is not a gentle place of consensus. I know I'm, I'm just a kind person. If that is your philosophy, safe journey. Some of us have seen the cruelty of men and spirits enough. You don't fight out of anger and in foolishness. But the truth is that the whole world is said, have respect for the covenant, O oh Lord, for the dark places of the earth are the habitations of cruelty. Respect your covenant. The dark places of the earth. The devil will kill you if he can. Did you hear what I said? He would destroy anything he can destroy. You give him access to your life, your children, he will tear you. He will use men, he will use systems, he will even use believers. You need to learn to be strong. I want you to take a minute, just take one minute and pray and declare no weapon fashioned against me will prosper. Please open your mouth and pray. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises against me will fall in judgment. Someone is praying. Para savas kalabaranta ke parasya, krata gata braga da beleke parus ka vende ke perest, krape ke pereke perado sata Pray over your business. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your influence. Pray over the purposes of God in the life of your children. Someone is praying. Shas ka belenta ke pras ka balakatos. Speak over your finances, no decline. In the name of Jesus, from glory to glory, speak over your job. All the antagonisms around your office, surely they will gather, but by favor, your God will scatter them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, can I give you number five? Please sit down for a few minutes. So engage in warfare. Be a believer that prays, not out of fear. The warfare of a believer is not fighting to win. It's establishing the victory through prayer and the forces that have been made available for the believer. Establishing the victory that is in Christ against unclean spirits who manipulate systems and manipulate men this is a twofold zone of operation of spirits they manipulate systems and structures to work against the saints and they manipulate the hearts of men number five manifesting spiritual realities mm. number one contend for light Number two, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction through meditation. Number three, mix the truth that you know with faith. Faith meaning obedience in all its ramifications. Obedience that commits the word. Number four, you engage in spiritual warfare, having the consciousness that there are demonical forces determined and assigned by hell to thwart the purposes of God in your life. Pay attention to number five. This is a very important component. Expect and prepare for the ministry of men. Expect and prepare for the ministry of men. Just write it down and I'll explain. How realities are manifest from the realm of the spirit to this physical realm. You must expect and you must prepare to receive the ministry of men. Hmm. Till the nations 
See Jesus till the nations. See Jesus till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive. I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Write this down, please. The final manifestation of supernatural realities happens through the ministry of men. The final arrival or manifestation of spiritual realities happen through the ministry of men. I'm showing you the conversion systems in the spirit, how it leaves the realm of the spirit and finally arrives at your life. The final arrival or manifestation of supernatural realities, it happens through the ministry of men. John 5, 7. Why are you in this condition, Jesus said. And he said, I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. 1 Samuel chapter 10, 3 and 4. Prophet Samuel blesses Saul and says, Then thou shalt go forward from tents, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there thou shalt meet three men. Who will you meet? As proof that prophecy has come upon your life, you will meet men. Three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three goats or kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine verse 4 as a result the men will salute you and give thee two loaves of bread and when they give you see it as God answering you thou shalt receive it from where how do you receive what God gives you from the hands of men how do you receive what God gives you from the hands of men one more time how do you receive what God gives you from the hands of men? Keep that scripture there. I'll read it one more time. They will salute you because God has gone ahead of you. They will give you two loaves. I prophesied increase. I prophesied restoration. I prophesied favor. This is what he's saying. But as proof, you will not get it from me. I'm representing God. But go. As you go, keep watching out for men. Watch out for men. Every time you see men, remember what God told you. He said, because of what God told you, men will give you, receive it from their hands. Where is your job? The hands of men. Your promotion, the hands of men. That is the truth. Every one naira, one dollar that will come into your account today is not falling from heaven. It's currently in the hand of a man. My life changed when I found out that every man's destiny is as taunted and delayed as the arrival of the men sent from God to you. When God wants to help you, he accelerates the arrival of the men who have a role to play in your life. If Jesus never found um, John the Baptist, he would have remained there. For a long time, I thought that John the Baptist, the pregnancy of John the Baptist was just a delay on Rebecca until God showed me from the lens of scripture 
if John was born way ahead of Jesus, he would have been discouraged and he would have left that wilderness. He had to only be six months older than Jesus so that he would match the arrival of Jesus. If that guy was born before that time, he would have waited in the wilderness maybe for 10 years and he would have said, you know what, this Jesus is not coming to. It is from that scripture I learned that all things work together. There are some things that God makes to happen at certain times so that it will coincide with prophecy and make for your lifting. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. John chapter 6 from verse 5. The ministry of men. 6 from verse 5. Give it to us media. Jesus lifted up his eyes. This is Jesus after one of his crusades. He saw a great company come to him. And he said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread? In fact, give me NIV, please. NIV, let's, let's work with NIV. So you understand what this scripture is saying. Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Reading verse 6. He asked this only to test them for he already knew how to convert those spiritual realities. You see that now? Jesus himself, he knew that those resources were available. But how we to now come and feed 5,000 people? Seven. Philip answered, eight months wages will not buy enough bread to give each one a bite. 5,000 men aside women and children. Verse 8. Another of his disciples called Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Uh -huh. Here is a young boy. Say men. The miracle always happens when men show up. So that when you are praying, you will know how God answers prayer. He answers prayer by sending men. But you must know how to receive the men. Because there are some of you, like the believers that were praying for Peter. They were praying for Peter to arrive. When Peter arrived and he opened the door, they shut the door back and said he was his angel. You need to know how to receive the men God is sending to you. Here is a boy. Even though he's a boy, he's still a man. Some of you will reject him immediately and say he is just a boy. How about the slave girl who brought about the miracle of Naaman? When it has to do with the ministry of men, I'll be showing you a few things. You must sustain the discernment to look beyond the limitations of men. Sometimes the person that God will use to lift you will not be a CEO somewhere. It will be the cleaner in your house. He will say something there is a miracle service somewhere. Oh, sir, can I ask for permission to miss Sunday? A miracle service where? A ministry called Koinonia. Said, ah, people have been telling me about that thing. Oh, that can be the spirit of God moving. And you come and sit down outside. Fire falls from heaven. And captivity of 100 years, 80 years, 30 years. Just like that. And the moment you get healed and you get delivered, the boy says, I just got admission to move to a school somewhere. God brought that boy there as a destiny helper for your deliverance. Are we together? Back to that scripture, please. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? Don't downplay what God can do with men. Jesus said, have the people sit down. You see where we got the formula for sharing our palliatives from this scripture i was discussing with the people when we were having a meeting and i said let's go to scripture how did they share bread in the bible the first thing is to tell the people to sit down because when people stand they don't listen so tell them to sit down if you are not going to sit down the bread will not come to you this is where we found it and there was plenty of grass in that place and the men sat down about five thousand of them verse 11 Jesus took the loaves from the man. Watch this. He gave thanks. The supernatural aspect was done by Jesus. But then he now distributed it using men again. It was Jesus that gave thanks. But those who shared it were not angels. They were men. And as they were going sharing it, it was multiplying supernaturally. When you read down to verse 13, the Bible says everyone ate and he said, gather the crumbs. And they gathered, it was 12 baskets full, and he said, let nothing be wasted. Men can be used by God 
to take away waste from your life. It is men that are responsible for increase, but it is also men that are responsible for managing the increase so that there is no waste. When it had to do with getting the blessing, men came. Distributing the blessing, men were there. Managing the excesses of people when abundance comes is still men. The final arrival of spiritual realities is through the ministry of men. Watch this now. There are many dimensions of results and promises we seek. I listed a few here. Growth, financial increase, direction, healing, deliverance, get the teachings, jobs, promotions, marital settlement, fruitfulness, receiving the anointing, business expansion. I'll repeat it again for your sake. Growth, financial increase, direction in life and destiny, healing, deliverance, jobs, promotions, marital settlements, fruitfulness of all sorts, receiving the anointing, expansion in business, intellectual growth, all of these resources are men dependent. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the spirit, but they all depend on the ministry of men. I took out time to study from Genesis to Revelation, the various manifestations of the supernatural to find out how many of them did not depend on men. And there were very few, very few in the Bible. For instance, the original creation, a man did not play a role because a man was not even there. You see that now. Jesus or God visiting Solomon, there was no man there directly as we know. So there are a few miracles that were directly, it was God to men, but men did not meet wife it. But most manifestations depended on men. Let me list a few for you. The multiplication of men across the earth through Adam and Eve, you find that in Genesis 3.20. He needed two men for multiplication to happen. Adam called his wife's name Eve. The Bible called her the mother of all living. The mother of all living. Preservation of the earth through the ark and through Noah. It happened through the man Noah. Without Noah, that preservation agenda would not have happened. How about bringing deliverance to Israel from Egypt? It happened through the man Joseph. How about manna falling from heaven? It was at the instance of a prophet called Moses. God used Moses to bring the manna from heaven. But when the manna fell, it was men that picked it to eat it. The manna did not jump into their mouth. Men still played the roles. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 5 to 7, when the axe head floated, it took a man as a prophet called Elijah. And the Bible says that when he prophesied and the axe head floated in verse 6, he told them, he said, now that I brought it up, he said, pick it up, verse 7. Therefore, he said, take it up. I have brought the miracle. The axe head is now floating. But it took a man to pick it up. If they left it, the miracle would not be complete. How about Samaria's supernatural deliverance from famine? It took the man, Elisha, by this time tomorrow. It took men, four lepers, that the Spirit of God moved upon them right and then it took men to pack those resources to Samaria to fulfill that prophetic word how about the deliverance of Nineveh it was through a man Jonah how about the birth of Jesus a woman Mary turning water to wine Jesus the man Mary the woman the disciples who were men who fetched the water, the, the water and turned it to wine? How about the raising of Lazarus? Men, the man Jesus, and the men that rolled away the stone, and the men that lose Lazarus to let him go. How about the feeding of the 5,000? We just read it. The young lad 
Andrew, the disciples, Jesus. I'm showing you the ministry of men. How about the triumphant entry to Jerusalem? John, Luke chapter 19, 30 to 35. Just write it for reference. The triumphant entry. Go to a village and you will find a donkey that no man, not even the owners, had ridden upon. Lose it from a man as a man and bring it to a man called Jesus for his triumphant entry. When the owners asked in verse 33 and 34, said the master has need of it. And he said, all right, fine, I give it to you. How about the burial of Jesus? The body of Jesus, like you have learned, was hanging on the cross. But redemption was not complete until a man had a role to play. Joseph of Arimathea used his influence as a man, used his virgin tomb as a wealthy man to bury Jesus for the burial and the resurrection to happen. How about announcing his resurrection? John 20, 16 and 17. Mary of Magdala, we call her Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah. When she heard it, John 20, 16 and 17. Mary, she turned herself and said, Rabboni, which is to say master, verse 17. Jesus said, do not touch me, for I am not ascended to my father. But you, as a human, man, woman, go to my brethren and announce my resurrection to them. It took a man to announce the resurrection of Jesus. It's still taking men today. Men, preachers, evangelists, missionaries, apostles, prophets, to herald that resurrection. Receiving from men demands the following. Please write. Number one, you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities in your life. Receiving from men demands the following. Number one, you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities. Koinonia is excelling today not just because God said so, but because of the ministry of faithful, loyal men, men in various ramifications. Number two, receiving from men demands that sometimes you may look beyond their frailties and limitations. It demands that you may look, you look beyond their frailties and limitations. Second Corinthians 4, 7. There is this treasure in earthen vessels. Sometimes the man who holds the key to your destiny may be an angry person, an angry boss, a temperous person. He will insult you from head to toe before he approves a one-week leave for you. It is amazing that sometimes you would think that because of these kinds of men, God should replace him and give others. And yet God does not. He will still keep his grace, his influence, his power with these men. Even though some of them are cyruses, God will still live it that way. Receiving from men demands the following. Number three, humility and adaptation. You want to receive from men as the final arrival point of spiritual realities. You must have humility and you must have the grace to adapt. I learned from Dr. Mike Mudok that adaptation is proof of honor. You must learn to adapt. There are men who have the power to help you, but they can make you sit in their office for seven hours. You will be annoyed, you will be grumbling, you will be saying, what is this? Who does this man think he is? You leave the office and see. One recommendation can help you. Humble yourself and stay. They are not God, but they can be used by God. Sometimes we need to be careful this issue of, are you God? I understand what you are saying. God can help people. But I'm showing you this system of conversion in the spirit. Don't fight men unnecessarily. You will lose at various fronts. Are we together? Humility and adaptation. There are times you need to just humble yourself. Ah, it's been five hours we kept you here. Sorry, we've been in, at a meeting. And while the devil wants to put offense in your heart, you say, no. I know the value that this person's presence can bring. There are many people today whose 10 years would have been reduced to one day if only they adapt, they, 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 they were able to, to adapt to the ministry of men. Hallelujah. Frailties. 
and limitations then humility and adaptation humility and adaptation humility listen to me don't try to receive from men that have what you need at your own terms it is pride are we together you want a job but you want it when you have the time and you say this man is a ceo uh, sometimes great people can even play with you and say when is your free time and instead of you to quickly say no 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 sir please whatever time you give me you say well uh, since you have asked and you don't know that that question is the interview that question you see is the interview and you fail it woefully and go back calling it favor say can you imagine the man even asked me oh, just one question how can a man hunger? That means there's really something on my life and they never call you again. Are we together? You shouted that you received power and what? Wisdom. When you see great people, don't worship them, but don't trivialize the sacrifices that have brought them where they are. I leaned over in the living room in the afternoon, just relaxing and reflecting on the teaching and I was just scrolling a few channels and I stumbled across a channel that was showing, I think the video, a, do, a, a, a documentary, some film that was acted on Baba Deboe. And it caught my attention. I watched a few, just a few for a few, but it really impacted me so much. When I got in later and I got into the room, I was thinking, I said, my God, I mean, you could sense the anointing from that, 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 um, that movie. I said, look at such a great man. From the movie, I saw some of the challenges that that man went through. And I said, today, people will just get up and think he got there by luck. 85 years. Over how many years of serving the Lord? Listen. Never downplay the sacrifices that brought glory to men your boss may be an angry man but he was not promoted by luck are we together now yes this man who knows he's just lucky the man even sounds like a dummy yet he was working in the civil service before you were born what made the government or what made whoever to elevate him to that point Believers always like to downplay the sacrifices of people. You see a great preacher and you say he's just lucky. It's an attitude of failures and losers. Nobody has sustainable result by mistake. I'm sharing with you irrefutable principles. Don't. The fathers of faith, my goodness. As I grow in ministry, and as God continues to do what he's doing in our lives around the world, I am humbled by the kind of stamina that these fathers had. Because many of them were pioneers of these realms. Remember my teaching, followers of them? Many of them were pioneers. Even though they had the people before them, it was not in the manner and the fashion they followed. How did they survive the persecutions? How did they survive the things they had to endure, bringing them to that point of grace? Some of us got born again in their churches, their branches. How did they believe God to expand that far? So how do you trivialize that? A man who through his ministry like Reinhard Bonke, over 100 million souls came to Jesus. 100 million recorded salvations, minus the ones that did not get documented. How do you casualize and trivialize such a ministry and you've not even won 50 people confirmed hallelujah a great chain maybe an eatery somewhere and you enter the eatery and you say these people shame on them i'm so disappointed look at the building it's not even nice the person who is speaking does not even have the money to finish the payment of the food you eat it He's hoping that his friends will help them. And sometimes the owner comes and says, okay, um, good afternoon, can we help you? Are you the owner? Look, let me tell you, it's just because I, there's nowhere to... <sighs> Rise. 
Respect greatness. Respect greatness. Greatness in ministry. Greatness in business. Greatness in governance. Respect greatness. It is one of the ways to receive from men. I will never dishonor true greatness when I see it. Because behind that crown, you have learned again and again here are scars, testaments of endurance. Testaments of endurance. Some of these great people may not be as smart as you think they are, but there is a covenant before God that has brought them to that point of grace. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Hallelujah. I remember one day I was passing a particular state and they took me around and I saw a very large property in acres and they said it belonged to so-so-so ministry and I just nodded my head. I said, these people again, you see this grace. Whereas someone can be struggling for one plot of land and never get it and there are people who have a grace for territory. Every grace you ignore, you have shut the door to receiving it. Receiving from men demands humility and adaptation. Let me give you a final thought on the ministry of men. Receiving from men demands gratitude and honor. I will draw me to you and you've heard countless testimonies here of the value of gratitude. Let me challenge you this week. Find something to tell any boss or any superior you have. If it's a gift, buy a gift and tell them thank you. Genuinely, don't do it pretentiously. Take this as a prophetic instruction. Go to your office tomorrow with a gift. Apostle, you are putting me in an I hate that man. You will remain there. You want promotion. Humble yourself. Sir, thank you. This is a little token. I bought you a basket of oranges and this. Just to say thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for giving my sister a job. And the person laughs and said, I'm, I'm busy, we're in a meeting. That's all right, thank you, God bless you. And you say, you see, he didn't even acknowledge me. Don't worry. Do it. Go and tell your superior, thank you. Tell your spouse, thank you. Don't wait for a Valentine. Tell your spouse, thank you. Genuinely and sincerely. Tell your children, tell your parents, tell your loved ones, tell anyone who has been a major contributor or can be used by God, a man of God who's, who has impacted your life sincerely, tell them thank you. You can sow into their lives, do it. You can sow into their lives, send a text with gratitude. Apostle say I should thank you. Thank you for being one of the people who blessed me. He would delete it with anger and block your line. Say wisdom. Please shout it koinonia, say wisdom. Don't do that. When you are appreciating people, don't compare them. Take out time to appreciate them uniquely for what they stand for. You do it and watch the testimonies that happen after this. And don't forget to tell God himself, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son, leaving your spirit health. Your work on earth is done. When I meet with my leaders, I always start by telling them thank you. When I meet with the workers, I start by telling them thank you. Whether here, Canada, UK, US, doesn't matter. Thank you. You want to enjoy the ministry of men? Learn to say thank you. Don't just say thank you when you are given gifts. Even after that, I think there's a Yoruba strategy, let me borrow it now, where you say thank you the night and by the next day, you say thank you again. Powerful strategy, double it even. Do your own for three days, thank you. Then say thank you. Then say I wish I didn't have to do this but I'm too grateful to be silent. Thank you again sir. Ah! Man says who is this? This is my secretary, I found my secretary. No application. Thank you. They do an interview for you when you are done. Don't frown your face and say, are you done? They say, go. Thank you. I'm teaching you as simple as what I'm saying is, 
it has worked in my life like magic thank you to God thank you to men thank you to those under those who are your contemporaries those above you receiving from men demands honor demands gratitude those of you who are going to receive palliatives after service I hope you will say thank you yeah listen to me the church is a place of training if I don't say this some of you where's my own you just carry it and turn and it, it doesn't hurt the giver the giver gives because they are blessed thank you many Christians are very bad at saying thank you bad at communicating honor learn this as a principle but just obey this prophetic instruction do it in your office this week you have contemporaries order a meal for three or five of them who are in your office just go to, to work and drop the meals and say I was in church and we were challenged to do this and here are the meals for all of you don't choose the ones you like do it for everybody including the one that fought you by the weekend do it some say no 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 who knows what they put in this don't worry you just do it someone will sit down and look at you and say this is it this person for doing this is not about the food it's about the thoughtfulness they will mark your kindness the day you are in need that's when you will know the value of men can I tell you one of the ways you know that you have commanded the attention of men is that they will show up the day you need them the day men you are in need and no man shows up is a testament that you have ignored this there are some of you God forbid not to make you sad but if there is a bereavement in your family or there's something you are sick or some challenge nobody shows up for you nobody your birthday everybody forgets it because you spent your life closing the door through offense through competition through jealousy through whatever it is nobody shows up for you you're a preacher nobody's there to help you how are you how is your health how is it no you're not influencing anybody manifesting spiritual realities we are here today because of God but the final bus stop was the ministry of men whilst we are here there is a team of faithful able people scattered across the globe preparing for a sound of revival conferences laboring day and night many of them following right now men you are as powerful as the men that God brings around if I'm not in Koinonia for one year, you will not stop being edified. The only thing you will miss is my unique contribution. But there are faithful men built by God, forged from the furnace, forged from fire. Men. Teaching at the school of ministry, men. Able to do the things that we're doing for the kingdom, men. There are tens of thousands of people following online now. Potentially hundreds of thousands and even millions will be listening to this message tonight and in the days to come. That is happening through the ministry of men. You've been seated, but there are wonderful people moving around doing this. There are security operatives all across this auditorium securing lives, securing property. Men. In the multitude of men, is a king's honor I repeat in the multitude of men in the multitude of men you are as powerful as the men that believe in you not the few that do not believe in you you are as powerful that them as the men the reason why Zuckerberg is a billionaire today is because we believe in him and his vision enough to patronize that business perpetually till he scaled his business to a point of wealth your business is at the mercy of men, not just God alone. Your ministry is at the mercy of men. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not just here tonight because you believe in Jesus. You are also here because you believe in the vessel he's using. That's why you left your house. That's why our international guests travel from around the world literally every week. There are people coming from around the world every two, two weeks, every month at least in this place right now. Don't tell me men do not matter. The final arrival point 
of everything that leaves heaven it comes through men let me recap for one last time the keys that transport realities from the spirit number one contend for light number two press into the realm of consciousness and conviction and that happens through meditation number three mix the truth you know with faith faith meaning obedience obedience in all its ramifications obedience as value obedience as wisdom number four engage in spiritual warfare the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm when you settle things in the realm of the spirit the spirit of god can find free course through men through systems and structures finally expect and prepare for the ministry of men take it half for me your life is at the mercy of the man who chooses to partner with the realm of the spirit for your manifestation when we call god ebenezer when we call him Jaira, when we call him all the names that we call him, it is because when he stretches his hands from heaven, his hand will enter through a man to finally reach to you. The person today who God will use to lift you financially is on earth. The person through whom God will anoint you and set you apart from an extraordinary ministry is already around. The destiny helper you have been praying for is not about to be born. is most likely born. God wants to bring glory through our lives. God wants to lift us and honor us. And God gave me an assignment to show you tonight how to manifest spiritual realities. This is how God helped this man standing before you. I read this from books. I listened to men who had capacity and results. And I'm glad I did listen. Ultimately, I listened to the word of God and to the voice of the Spirit. Today, look what God has done. It is to the glory of His name. It is the same. There is absolutely nothing the devil can do about it. These are irrefutable principles. As I saw the photos of some of the things that were putting together just to be a blessing to people, aside from do you know that I was told the registrations for the agricultural project, we just wanted a few people, but there were about 5,000 plus applications. I said, my God, what do we do? For the support for businesses, we're about 4,000 people. What takes a man from nothing to where you can experience the help of God? We don't know everything. We don't have everything yet, but there are some things he has shown us mercy in. And out of the abundance of his help, I have brought you a strategy tonight. Are we together? You can convert everything in the spirit from prophecy and make it manifest. What you see today is not what you are trying to bring down from the spirit. It's what we brought down years ago. Tomorrow we'll show you what we are doing now. Because compared to where he's taking us, we're only a step out of the cave. Truly till the nation see Jesus. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Be glorified. Glorified, hallelujah, be glorified. Please rise up on your feet. Be glorified, be glorified, hallelujah, be glorified. Sing the South African version.
and then I speak over you. Father, everything you have declared in scripture, this is the season where I want to see it manifest in my life. Go ahead and obtain grace. Obtain grace to contend for light. Koinonia, you are praying. Obtain grace to contend for light. Obtain grace to rise through meditation to a realm that is beyond mental ascent. A realm of conviction, persuasion, consciousness. Obtain grace to mix the things that you hear with faith, obedience, value, putting the word to work, satisfying the conditions that commit God to speak in your life. Obtain grace to engage in the place of prayer until you settle scores in the spirit. Word of the arsenals of darkness mandated to fight your influence, your relevance, the purposes of God in your life. Come on, are you praying? Finally pray for discernment to be able to engage with men. Destiny actualization is men dependent. Excelling in ministry is men dependent. Excelling in business is men dependent. You are as powerful as the men God bring to your life. You are as mighty as the men that stand with you, stand for you, stand by you. Your company is as powerful as the men who need you. The men who patronize your products and services. As a man of God, you are as powerful and relevant as the men who are willing and open to receive of the grace of God and the spiritual value that is invested in your life. Don't downplay men. It is not good for a man that he should be alone. When you are alone with no men, your life is not good. Your ministry will not be good. Your business will not be good. Someone pray. Hallelujah. I'm about to speak over your life. The Bible says the Lord gave the word. It says great was the company of them. The Lord gave the business idea. Great was the company of them. The Lord founded the ministry. Great was the company of them. The Lord brought the vision, brought the project. Great was the company of them that came to stand. In ancient times, if kings conquered the land, they would take the men. The men help them to expand their influence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tempted to lead you to one prayer. Please, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, this week, the men sent by God to make prophecy finally manifest. Lord, bring them by your mercy. Go ahead and pray. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. The men my business need. The men needed in my ministry. The men needed in my family. The men needed in my destiny. The men needed for my products, my services. The men needed for my vision. By your mercy, bring them. Bring them. They are on earth. They are around. They are willing to help. Bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me secure a visa. Bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me scale my education, bring them. The men needed to help me with my housing issue. I need your help. Your house is a place of help. Send the help from his sanctuary. That happens through men. Come through for me. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my head. 
my God, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Send men, send voices that have the ears of my helpers. In Jesus' name I pray. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. And I want you to receive this prophetic word. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. The grace that backs everything I have taught you today. That empowers you to walk in keeping and see it manifest. May that grace rest upon you. The grace to contend for light. Receive it in Jesus name. The grace that supplies the discipline to meditate until scriptures become spirit and life to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace that empowers you to obey and to obey completely. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The energizing of the spirit to contend in the place of prayer until you birth and manifest victories. I release that grace upon you. The grace that brings men, that draws men from all the 36 states in this nation, the continents in the, the nations that make up this continent and the continents of the earth, wherever your help is through men, may God gravitate it to your destiny. No more delay of prophecy over your life. Koinonia, hear me. No more delay of prophecy over your life. Let it manifest speedily. Speedily. Regardless the economic turmoil that is sweeping across the nations of the earth, I pray for you. The men who will put you in a position of advantage to be immune from this financial holocaust, may God send them to your life. The men who will announce what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ, without struggle, God will bring them to your life. And I pray for you, anybody who has left your life by demonic manipulation, they should not have left, they were helpers. And the devil created a scenario and took them out of your life. I return them by prophecy to your life. I return them by prophecy to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me please. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no life. You reject Jesus, you reject life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace continuity. You embrace lifting, you embrace deliverance, you embrace healing, you embrace exaltation. It is for this reason that Jesus gave his all and his everything. I'm praying for someone right now that you have never made a genuine decision for Jesus. Do not let us close this service without you running to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Someone must have been impacted by this message and he's saying, Apostle, I want to make this decision truly. For someone you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm counting one to five. Run, pack your Bibles, your whatever it is, your bags, everything you came to church with. Don't allow anyone to come before you. Leave your seat and come. I'm counting one to five. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat. I'm running, I'm running. Two, are you coming? celebrate them as they come. If you know today that if Jesus comes, you are going to hell, come and join them. If you know today you are not sure of salvation, 
that with the trumpet sounds you are going straight to hell come and join them don't cheat your destiny and don't waste your destiny now today is the day of salvation the Bible is very clear as to that please come Jesus is able to give you a new beginning there's no point shying away there's no point pretending not when love is around not when mercy is around the Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace and for all who are falling online connecting from all our expressions make sure that you open up your heart to receive salvation it is a gift a gift that is received by faith thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for coming I salute your courage it is a noble thing to make Jesus Lord of your life the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom you're joining them thank you my sister please join them very quickly if you're joining them come quickly I'm about to lead them to pray lift your right hand if you can high above your head say this after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus say it again say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go for whatever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for the gift of these precious ones who have come to the cross i pray by the power of the holy spirit based on the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you this moment bona fide recipients of the life of god i call you the righteousness of god in christ recipients of his life the grace to live the victorious christian life from tonight let it be released upon you in the name of jesus you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen thank you so much thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.